Survivor. At the time that I first pitched Survivor, I was making Eco Challenge for Discovery Channel. And so my first thing that I did was, you know, I felt a sense of loyalty to Discovery Channel. And I took Charlie Parsons with me and we went to uh, Maryland, uh, Bethesda, Maryland, where the old Discovery Channel offices were and met with Mike Quattrone, who was the head of programming then at Discovery Channel and pitched him this vision I had, feeling like, you know, probably out of sense of loyalty, I should offer it to them. I'm sure they would buy it because Eco Challenge, you know, was good and they'd seen my sense of storytelling. So I think, I don't know, I think this was in 1998, I feel like. So maybe the first meeting with Charlie was 97, I can't remember. Um, and they rejected it as if, you know, it was a, a nutty idea and wouldn't work. Um, I'm sure they've regretted that ever since, right? Um, but I was very disappointed and uh, then went about setting meetings and everybody rejected it, you know, at first, including CBS. And then I went back to CBS um, the second time to meet with Leslie Moonves, who had seen Eco Challenge and liked Eco Challenge and my shooting style and a sense of that, you know, I'd won an Emmy for that. And Leslie also felt that at that time, which was in 1999, looking forward to a summer 2000 airing, and this was in mid-99, I think, probably at the time, uh, that Leslie felt that viewers were increasingly leaving network TV during the summer of reruns and less were coming back in the fall. And if it continued, there was an alarming trend, which meant that rather than just do repeats, which were free, obviously, for the network, mm -hmm. they should maybe spend some money and try some original programming in the summer. And uh, Leslie felt this was really interesting. This was kind of groundbreaking. But he had a problem, which was, first of all, I, Mark Burnett, I love Eco Challenge. Seemed like a really enthusiastic guy with a vision who could probably execute based upon Eco Challenge. But, you know, we do pilots. We don't give 13 hours on the air to untested network producers. And we're not going to be able to add someone to you because this is like, no one's done this before. And you're the closest thing that's probably likely to pull it off. So really from a cost basis, it's prohibitively expensive to risk 13 hours. And I explained I couldn't do a pilot because there's no point. Right? There's got to be an end game. So I didn't want to do a, a special or a pilot. And I could see that while Leslie Moonves wanted cerebrally and emotionally to say yes to Survivor, that there was a cost issue. So I pitched him right there and then on the concept which I'd learned through Eco Challenge, a sponsorship, and said, yeah, let's look at this like the Olympics. What if we found a series of sponsors who bought into not only some commercial on the show, but the associative marketing values and we could even drop in products. For example, if it was a, a cell phone, what is the value of a cell phone call home to someone after 30 days? The emotion of that would resonate. What's the value of a slice of pizza? What's the value of a bottle of beer? A bottle of beer might cost a couple of bucks in our world. Could be worth a thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, a hundred thousand dollars to a person on a desert island. And Leslie stopped and said, well, that's interesting. He said, you know what? Go work with my ad salespeople. I'm going to give you 60 days to come up with sponsors. We'll pre-do a deal now and give you 60 days to prove this and to get those sponsors sold. Now, to my knowledge, I was the first person ever as a producer who was allowed to even work with the ad sales in that manner of going around America, you know, um, 
because of Leslie being the the boss, I mean the boss's boss, right? Um, Leslie was able to say, I think we should try this. I met with um, Joe Abizay, who was head of CBS Ad Sales, Chris Simon, and Joanne Ross, who worked underneath Joe Abizay. I got along very well with all of them. I could talk the talk on advertising because I'd had to, between Team American Pride, Regawa, and Eco Challenge, I'd had to deal with advertisers. I, I, that's what I had done to make a living. So I understood the marketing um, adjacencies, the associative value, um, the feeling, and I felt the survivor could really work in this way. Anyway, so I went to New York and met with General Motors, um, and pretty you know, in one meeting they thought, this is interesting, we'll try this. Now we priced it in a way that the rating um, was just a very average rating, that it wouldn't be hard to meet the, meet the, the promise to the advertisers. We just wanted to prove this new type of television could work on television. Then I went to Target in Minneapolis and met with Target and they agreed to come on board. And then I think another advertiser, I can't remember at the second, and Leslie called me and said, we're gonna do this. I said, well, you give me 60 days. I think we only have two on board and I'm confident we can get a third and a fourth and you wanted eight. He said, no, my people tell me this is great. You're really good at this and it's gonna work out. And you know what? We're gonna take a risk. Let's do this, which was awesome. Awesome. You know, Leslie Moonbiz gave me an opportunity. You know, he knew that I, you know, wasn't bullshitting him, that I, A, believed in what I was saying, and B, understood the advertiser's needs.